السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام uh, Hey, do you pray? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I do What about Game of Thrones? Do you watch that? <laughs> no way, I just finished season four Find your perfect partner Singlemuslim.com Proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle Love is being soulmates, really In Islam, marriage is a fundamental part of a Muslim's life it is widely accepted across all schools of thought that getting married is half your faith. Half your religion if you marry, and that is a huge thing that my parents also believe in. However, for Muslims, finding a life partner in Britain isn't the easiest of tasks, especially when you are observing the faith while searching. To find someone that you physically, mentally and emotionally connect with is so difficult. Twelve wonderful people have agreed to embark on a unique journey with us not only to share their experiences and struggles in finding a life partner, but also to learn new things about themselves along the way. I feel that I'm ready now to share my life with someone. I just hope that it happens one day. If I was to meet someone else, I'd probably take it very, very slow. Does marriage being seen as more of a religious duty distort one's judgment in seeking a life partner? I think you say you're looking for a wife, but I don't think you are looking for a wife. With divorce always being a risk, could some be about to make the same mistakes again? Don't look for someone who's like you. Look for someone who's going to compliment you. This journey isn't about matchmaking. It's an insight into how 12 British Muslims are dealing with the struggles of trying to complete half their faith. My, my ideal lady is someone who is, you know, um, who, are, who is um, a conviction, but it's difficult to describe, you know. Matt Lube is 39 and looking for a wife to take along on life's amazing journey. He wants someone who will let him be his true self without being judged. I'm looking for somebody who's got a strong faith, somebody who's not materialistic, trying to help society, to help the Ummah and help the world. I think now I kind of understand uh, what kind of person I want in terms of, you know, the outlook. But to be honest with you, I just want somebody genuine down to earth. I'm very open-minded. Yeah, I just need someone that's genuine, really. Faith is definitely an important role because that's who I am. Matt Lou was raised in Halifax, West Yorkshire, but he always knew such a small town wasn't big enough for his aspirations. It's right now and uh, we're heading towards Halifax, where I grew up as a child. Dad kind of came here in, in the 60s. He was about 70 to 18 years old when he came to England. He studied here at the same time he used to craft in the factories. Uh, my parents were quite chilled in terms of, uh, they come from a very Sufi background, so religiously they were quite laid back. This is People's Park, and this is where all the fun happens in Halifax. All the melees, all the kind of you know events, community events will happen here. It's uh, overlooking the uh, the college I used to study. Yeah, got a lot of memories here, you know, growing up. But the dark side of this place is that you know, this is where all the kind of youth hang out, you know, at night. There was a stage my youth had got involved with a few gangs, and I really wanted to get out of this 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 culture zone in Halifax. I really wanted to really excel and progress in life. Matt Lube feels getting married overseas would be an easier option, but the real challenge for him is getting married at home in England. I want to be able to unconditionally trust someone, unconditionally love someone. Um, so that's the biggest issue I've got at the moment. I do a lot of business in Malaysia. I do a lot of charity work in Kashmir and other places. I'll be honest with you, there's girls there, loads of them want to marry me there. You know, I'm like a dato in Malaysia and all that. And it's like, I'm a sir. And, they're after me there, you know, I had to run. I was in Ramadan, I was in Malaysia in Ramadan. And all, the two families were already trying to hitch me up with a 20 year one year old, right? So I kind of just flew out really quick. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm finding it difficult in this society, but other societies, it's very easy for a British guy to get married. And the reason why I don't pursue that is because I want to give it a good shot here first. He has many friends who are both male and female, one of which is Iram, who feels she can shed some light on this situation. Well, I've known with Lube over 10 years, and I met him um, through work. He was my first boss. I never worked for anybody. 
Well, when Matlu, to be honest with you, he's got a lot of deen in him, but he's also got a lot of um, freedom. He's not very strict in his ways. If a woman can really understand him and not control him, Matlu's a very easygoing person. But once a woman starts accusing him and starts uh, just little arguments and stuff, he will withdraw back because he only takes once, twice, three times. He's, he's got a lot of patience, but it does, does come a time when looks like he will walk away. So you don't underestimate him, to be honest. <laughs> don't underestimate him. However, due to Matlu being divorced, it is a concern that he may be going into his next marriage with the same requirements as last time. I'm married for the sake of Allah. Yeah, I'm married because I chose Iman over everything else. And I'll be honest with you, although I had six years of a rough marriage, although I'm now divorced, the pain, the difficulties, the challenges, you know, it was all worth it. Yeah, and we've come out of it, we've come stronger, she's come out stronger. You know, I'm ready to move on, much stronger. I'm, I'm very much into social work, you know, social entrepreneur, into charity work. So I'm looking for somebody who's, you know, going to be in a similar kind of you know, outlook in life. I'm not really putting any certain criterions on this time. I'm very open, I'm very open-minded. Matt Lube's mum is also concerned about the difficulty in her son finding a wife. This is uh, Matt Lube's mum. So I'm going to ask her in my language because she won't be able to reply back in English. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find somebody these days to compromise with. But through my experience, I have to search for a daughter in law. She goes even to search for a daughter in law as regards as she sees Matlub searching, it still is very hard. Yeah, even the younger mm. kids are seeing Matlub's experiences. It's harder for the younger kids as well now in the family. With family expectation adding to the pressure, could Matlu be making the same error again by focusing completely on religious aspects? So I think this time round, I'm a bit chilled. Faith is a, a definitely an important role because that's who I am. I think marriage is a big commitment. It's about supporting and Supporting. Oh it's about supporting and supporting. <laughs> I see, I get nervous because of the camera. Isra from Cardiff, Wales, is 29 and looking for the right man to complete half her faith. Hi, I'm Isra, I'm from Wales and I'm a single mother of two. I've been working in the civil service for the last 10 years. There are times when I feel a bit lonely because the girls, they go to school, they go to Arabic classes and then they go to bed early school days. It is quite important for them to have a good male influence in their lives. So sometimes it gets really lonely in the house and quiet and I just think it would be nice to share your life with someone and have someone who's they love and care about you like I would with them. The worst kind of person I can imagine being married to would be someone abusive, even if it's not physical violence, even psychological and emotional violence. Someone who's dishonest, I can't stand dishonest people, and lazy people. I would have to get to know the person for a while, so it would never be another arranged marriage, ever. Isra started her road to completing her faith a year ago, and she is looking for love. I thought I need to get, this time I need to get to know the person before marriage because at the end of the day it affects my children's lives as well. I love swimming, badminton, but I haven't gone for a while. I like going to a gym and I like outdoor adventure. But I've got two little girls. They actually even know how to make tea and everything. So we go out, we have adventures here, there, everywhere and I just feel like I want to give them a bit of time because they don't even have a father figure there. I work three days and the rest is like, you know, trying to there for them. As a Muslim, Isra's search for a life partner must stay within the boundaries of Islam, so it hasn't been easy to find people in her local area. It has been difficult because I didn't really have male friends before, so I didn't really know what to expect from how guys are like. Really searching online, because I'm not really out there, you know, going to go and talk to someone. And If you follow the religion, you're not really allowed to mix with the opposite gender, and your parents will find the best one for you. They'll do the background check and everything because there are bad people out there. I would have to get to know the person for a while, so it would never be another arranged marriage, ever. It's really hard because in our community, people don't understand. They think, you know, if you divorce, that's bad, but that's just culture, it's not really religion. If I start talking to someone local, my family might get involved and they'd want to, you know, hurry it up and get me married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that pressure, then it falls, like, because we're family, 
they'd be really happy if I found someone and just settled down. But with me, I'd, I'd want to get to know someone for, for a while, build that trust. Isra has resorted to finding people through online websites, which has opened up a host of new struggles for her. Well, I don't trust men, because most are, you know, dishonest. Look, like here's like a, one of the evidence of these guys. So we're just like, you know, they're on this my side. It's not a dating side. If nothing, we can just be good, really good friends. And he keeps messaging, even though I was like, no. And he's like, even though I'm not looking for friends here, then why are you messaging and saying you want to be friends? I've been searching on and off, so it, it isn't something that's like my first priority because, it, you know, things have been going really well since I've divorced him. Since I've been single, I've had more freedom. I've been able to go places, do things, which I hadn't been able to before. But there has been incidents where there's been crazy, deceptive people who are just out there to mess about. Recent online experiences make it extremely hard for her to trust anyone. In the past, I have met someone. So I got my brother-in-law to meet him. They got so impressed by the person after, you know, interviewing him and spending a day with him. They went and told my dad and they got the whole family involved. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, hey, do you pray? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I do. What about Game of Thrones? Do you watch that? <laughs> no way. I just finished season four. <laughs> Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, hey, do you pray? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I do. What about Game of Thrones? Do you watch that? <laughs> no way. I just finished season four. Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. Trust is a component of any happy marriage, but for Isra, it is the foundation when finding a potential suitor. Well, I don't trust men, because most are, you know, dishonest. Her experiences of finding someone online have been negative. Well, I've spoken to potentials, you know, generally off the site, to be honest. So basically, you know, the dishonesty, and some have been really crazy as well. In the past, I have met someone, so I got my brother-in-law to meet him. They got so impressed by the person after, you know, interviewing him and spending a day with him. They went and told my dad and they got the whole family involved. Well, his family, they were okay, they were accepting, accepting of me and his sister was really nice. But afterwards I find out the guy, he's a bit dodgy, he doesn't even work. He lied and he said he's a teacher. He was living off, you know, disability allowance. He's not even disabled. And, you know, he was, I didn't realise, but he was in the war for Afghanistan and all that and that did really affect him mentally. So he was an extremist? And he didn't come across like that. He came across really practicing and decent. And in the past, that's what I was going for. I was going for someone Islamic, thinking, not extreme, obviously, but someone, I felt like if someone's practicing, if they understand Islam, then they'll be loyal and honest. And She is coming to accept that she may not need a man in her life. So I'm not, I don't feel like I have to have someone, but then there are times when I feel a bit lonely because the girls they go to school they go to arabic classes and then they go to bed early school days so sometimes it gets really lonely in the house and quiet and i just think it would be nice to share your life with someone due to her past experiences is it easier for isra to take the stance that she does not need a man is it a defense mechanism to rationalize her staying single when she believes marriage is a religious duty i guess i don't mind staying single either because you know I've, sometimes you just have to be grateful for everything you have and appreciate everything you have. So now I feel like, you know, single life is much better because I'm doing everything I can for my children anyway. So that's why I feel I don't have to have someone unless the person is, you know, decent and loving and caring and understanding. It appears Isra may have never experienced true love. Can her mindset be changed to help her with the struggle in completing half her faith? I just want to, you know, see if if my negative mindset against men can be changed. Do you think that's acceptable? If I still stick by it so far. I don't believe I can grow on the next level, yeah? I don't believe I can grow as a man and do the great things that I want to do on my own.
Back in Manchester, we are following divorced social entrepreneur Matt Loeb in his search for love. To me, marriage is very spiritual. It's a bond, it's an institution of Allah. And the most important thing for me in terms of marriage is to complete my life, basically. He is looking for someone who can relate to his personality. I want to be able to unconditionally trust someone, unconditionally love someone. So that's the biggest issue I've got at the moment. I've met many people in my new search. And generally, what I'm finding is the same old thing again. It's not changed. You know, you're not the right caste, you're not the right money. Um, but even in religious people, I'm finding issues. For example, if I tell them, they're too worried about what kind of philosophy I've got. You know, are you a Salafi? Are you a Sufi? Are you this? Are you that? Matt Loeb's religion is central to his purpose in life, and this journey was not an accident. But at the age of 16, I found Islam. And when I found Islam, my life kind of changed. I came across you know, some of the youth groups at the time, and I started studying Islam properly. You know, we started learning what marriage is supposed to be, what Allah wants from me, and how I should conduct myself in society, and who I should become. So I was finding my identity. With marriage being seen as a religious duty, are his requirements religious buzzwords or the success criteria to a happy marriage? To help him think more about his spiritual compatibility, he has come to see John Fontaine, a rising Manchester-based YouTube blogger with over 10,000 subscribers. If you could choose any, any woman now in the world, you talk about practising, how will she be practising? I think the most important thing to me would be somebody who could be, become, easily become part of my family, part of my life, and complement who I am, and become like a, you know, my team. So I'd, I'd want somebody who's capable of, you know, coming into my life and supporting me with that. What about you supporting her in the things she's doing? Absolutely. You're not just looking for a secretary, are you? I'm looking for someone to come into my life and compliment me, mm. and automatically I will, I know, I will bring out the best in her, and I will help fulfil her dreams mm. uh, to to revive the sunnah. And so these are the things that I want to do myself, and I'd like someone who is uh, wanting to be part of that. Mm. Not necessarily having to, you know, she doesn't have to be a scholar or a extremely, extremely pious in that sense. Are you looking for a wife who's going to stay at home? I personally believe there's got to be that balance. Yes, you know, she should be active in society, but for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. I'm an entrepreneur and I set up my own businesses. If my wife wants opportunity, I'll create that opportunity for her within yeah. my home, yeah. within my companies, you know. I'll, I'll, if she wants to be a doctor, I'll set up a hospital for her, mm -hmm. you understand? It's clear Matt Loeb wants someone who is faith-based. However, as the night goes on, it becomes increasingly confusing what kind of balance Matt Loeb is seeking in a marriage partner. I've met different types of girls in the past, you know, some who want to be career-driven and some who want to stay home. So I want somebody who is selfless in that sense, not running after the dunya in that sense. You know, I'm very ambitious, you know, and I want to work with kings, I want to work with governments, and I work with big business people, I travel to Malaysia, I know some of the royals, which I'm getting close to right now. My dream is to walk with kings, so I can be friends with them, so I can advise them. Although I don't mind her, you know, being a teacher elsewhere in a school, do you understand? But that shouldn't take over her life. Her gaze, his hijab, the way she looks at a man, the way she talks to a man's hijab, okay, the way she walks down the street is hijab. A lot of the girls want Mini Coopers, bright red, modesty. So I'm looking for that modesty. I would never stop my wife, you know, going out there and interacting and doing great things. I've seen money, but it's people's intentions behind having that in their hands. So I want someone who's who's understood money, really, who's understood the world. So that's, that's you know, uh, yeah, I hope that explains that. Not really. No? no? Well, I don't trust men because most are, you know, dishonest. Isra doesn't see herself as an overly religious person. I'm not exactly strict practising myself, so I would want someone who's a moderate practising, not someone who's ex who has extreme views. With marriage being a fundamental part of Islam, it's important to get the right understanding of where religion fits in your search for a partner. Yeah, religion is very important to me. My relationship with Allah has grown since since I got divorced. That's when I, you know, I felt like there is a good behind every bad, because I felt like that's when I became a stronger person and I became more spiritual and I realised 
you know, people weren't always there for us, but Allah was always there for us and, you know, he made me the stronger person. We have sent Isra across the Welsh border to England's capital to get some insight on spiritual compatibility in a partner. She is meeting with Nassim, a marriage guidance counsellor. A mix of both Eastern and Western values. It's not someone who's just, you know, I don't want someone who's so extreme either. What would extreme mean to you? Someone whose beliefs are so strong that they don't, they're not open-minded to what other people's beliefs are and they're quite aggressive when it comes to what they think is right. Isra enjoys her freedom, but is worried about something from her past. The worst kind of person I can imagine being married to would be someone abusive, even if it's not physical violence, even psychological and emotional violence. Someone who's dishonest, I can't stand dishonest people, and lazy people. Hmm. Also someone who, who doesn't want you to just sit at home. I would want to at least work part-time, and I don't want someone who'd want me to work full-time and you know, manage all the finance on my own. I've had that issue part in the past. Serious, but not too serious. Someone who will want to enjoy life as well. So what, what do you mean by serious then? I mean, like someone who's not so serious that they're strict on everything. So in terms of your emotional well-being, what kind of safeguards have you put in place that you don't go down that old route way that you went through with your ex-husband? I think I'm more stronger than I was back then. And I'm more spiritual, I think, you know, because I'm... I feel like I've become, I build my relationship with Allah more. I agree if you understand Islam properly for what mm. it really is and they follow the, the path of the Prophet Muhammad, mm. peace be upon him, then they would know how to treat you as a woman, as he treated his wives. Mm. You are not necessarily stuck with the issues of your ex-husband and mm. the, the trust that he That's lost fine. because of his gambling and mm. his behaviour in general and his violence towards you. Mm. But other people have also cause that uh, mistrust. But I am sceptical as well with like things. So what's, what kind of scepticism do you have? I mean like, you know, trust, isn't it? If the trust is there, then it's easy, isn't it? It appears that Isra is being vague and unclear about what she is looking for. But what kind of things would you be looking for that would say, do you know, I can really trust this person? I mean like, they'd have to have the interest in the deen and okay. they'd have to fear Allah and they'd have to be honest, sincere and I mean like someone open minded and caring really. Well the cliche terms that we use, isn't it? It's vital Isra is absolutely clear on what quality she wants in a husband, or she won't find the man she wants. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh hey, do you pray? <laughs> Alhamdulillah I do. What about Game of Thrones? Do you watch that? <laughs> no way. I just finished season four. Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, hey, do you pray? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I do. What about Game of Thrones? Do you watch that? <laughs> no way. I just finished season four. Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. There's a big vacuum in my heart, you know, that needs to be fulfilled. I want to share my life with someone. I want to share my success, my failures. I want to share the rest of my life. And, uh, you know, I'm looking for a bit of happiness as like, like everyone else, you know. Matt Loop has come to meet Muslim YouTuber John Fontaine to help him think more about his spiritual compatibility in a partner. I've met different types of girls in the past, you know, some who want to be career driven and some who want to stay home. So I want somebody who is selfless in that sense, not running after the dunya in that sense. However, after an hour of discussion, John addresses an issue directly that needs clarity. You have to be careful when you're saying you don't mind, you know, the career woman or the woman who's going to stay at home. You know, you'll be approaching people for marriage with, with what you want, that you, you have to be specific that, look, now, I'm looking for a wife who, you know, wants to be at home, taking care of the family, you know, who wants to be looked after. I mean, is this what you want? I think in any society, that's the critical, you know, critical nucleus of any... But is it what you want? Get to I the point. So. I think so, yeah. John feels Matt Lube isn't being totally honest in front of the cameras. Don't just say what you think the viewers want to hear. I just don't. You want a housewife 
It sounds so like housewife that she's confined. She's not. No, there's nothing she's wrong. Not. Bro, housewife, housewife is one of it's the most important job in yeah. the world. But you have to be straightforward and honest with yourself, bro. Oh, You're yeah. looking for that strong family home. Absolutely. You know, you're looking for a housewife. Absolutely. You know, and this is something you have to be honest with yourself. I come from a large family, you know. My father's always worked, but my mother's always, you know, stayed at home. Uh, stayed at home in the sense that, you know, she's always supported the children and, and made us who we are as people. And I think that's a great thing for a woman to do. You know, to educate and, and create that strength at home. So this is this is what you're looking for. You know, seeing that in my family and seeing that in the traditions of Islam, mm. I think that's what I desire. That's what I'd like to see. I think Maqlubi just needs to actually focus on what he wants. I think today, actually speaking to him, it's actually a lot has actually come out. I think he was confused initially into what he wanted, and I think now that he's got a focus that he can actually look for what he's he's actually desiring. Uh, which I think is more of like a, uh, a housewife uh, from a similar culture to his, someone who, actually, who can actually get along with uh, his, his wider family. Um, but he needs to focus more on what he wants. In the end, Matt Loeb spoke his truest words yet. I think I'm afraid sometimes to really say to people what I want because it's, it's left me single for a long time. You know, it's finding someone that will accept me for who I am and what I want, really. That's something I'm finding a challenge with, so. Isra has travelled 150 miles to meet marriage guidance counsellor Naseem to get some insight into spiritual compatibility in a partner. They'd have to have the interest in the deen and okay. they'd have to fear Allah and they'd have to be honest. Nassim feels Isra should take more time to get to know someone before taking the next step. She does have trust issues and who can blame her if she's had issues with her ex, but not only that, when she's trying to find people online, she's had difficulties with people being dishonest. But I'm saying that if you take your time, even over the internet, you would still need to meet that person. I would never marry somebody just from the internet. Perhaps it's more about trying to speak to people via the phone or trying to meet them somewhere with other people. If, need a chaperone, so to try to get to know who they really are, give it a bit of time. And it may take longer, but at the end of the day, it's worth the result if you're going to find someone who you really want. Like she was saying, like you should try and get to know someone for a while, and even though that kind of goes against like the way we've been brought up, but then now I feel like it's very important to know, you know, get to know them. There's obviously going to be limits and boundaries. Matt Lube is looking to complete half his faith for a second time. I'm married for the sake of Allah. Yeah, I'm married because I chose Iman over everything else. I had six years of a rough marriage. I'm now divorced. He wants someone who equally values religion, but runs the risk of choosing a wife on the same criteria as before. You, know, you don't have to be a scholar or a extremely, extremely pious in that sense. He met YouTube blogger John Fontaine to discuss spiritual compatibility and eventually realised he's not looking for a wife who is career-minded. You know, you're looking for a housewife. Absolutely. You know, and this is something you have to be honest with yourself. This honest discussion helped Matt Lube accept that he may not always be himself in front of others. I think I'm afraid sometimes to really say to people what I want. Matt Lube wants to take his partner on his amazing journey of business adventures and charity work both of which show his compassionate side. He's um, got leadership skills. He's a very active person. Um, there's a lot of charity work. If people got to know him, uh, they would really like him. You know, I've got ambitions and I've got major goals. And I think I would love to find someone that can actually come into my life and not only support me, but actually become one with me to reach these goals. At 12, I started working. I started doing markets. So my dad was a trader, so business was second nature anyway. In 2011, I just started writing ideas of how I want to develop charity work and how I want to make an impact in the world and how I want to make an impact in society. So I created this charity called Amazing Community Projects, all focused on helping people and empowering people to become successful, not in just for this life or and for the afterlife as well. Welcome to... Uh, 
the Nur Malaysia Community Cafe in Manchester. It's a combination of charity, a cafe and a soup kitchen. So I came up with this idea three years ago. I really wanted to help the community, support people, a base where I could work with the youth, work with the community, uh, a wider community, regardless of the background, religion. And so this is it. Um, what happens here is that we have monthly events. We have massive curry events where people don't necessarily have to pay. It's basically eat as much as you want and pay whatever you want. So, you know, people can't afford, they'll come have a meal and just give us a couple of quid. We have study groups, uh, we have, um, we have, we've had a few marriages in here. Business has taken me across the world. I've been traveling to places like the USA and Europe and Malaysia, and it's been a fantastic experience. And I wanted to become a strong, wealthy Muslim so I can help people. When I went through some extreme difficulties, I realized that's not the way it should be. Instead, I should give myself to God. I should just become very selfless and then success will be automatic. And I, I learned that from uh, intuition, but generally, you know... It... Isra has big trust issues with men and it's time to find out where this stems from. My family are cultural. We're from Bangladeshi origin and my parents are very traditional and my dad was very calm, quiet. He was very kind and he always wanted to do the best for us. My mum was more the strict one than my dad, so there was always that, a bit of clash sometimes. My mum was very practising, so of course it was a big influence, Islamically on us. I'm one of the youngest, I'm the youngest daughter, but I do have two younger brothers. My parents' marriage was really good. That's what I thought marriage would have been like for myself. I was 18 when I got married, and it was to a distant relative. You just meet them in front of others and you get the opportunity to ask questions. But at the time I was young, I was shy and I, wasn't, I didn't really ask much to know if we had that connection or not. At the beginning he was fine, you know, he was loving, caring. He did really care about me at the start. Soon enough things took a turn for the worse and that's when Isra's test really began. He turned into a gambler and that just changed him as a person and he became an addiction and then he became violent. And I just felt like why should I, me and my kids have to put up with that because he was really nasty and violent and he was stealing all our food money, our mortgage money, which I used to have to be the one who's working hard out and home to provide. You know, when I was trying to divorce him, he really did make our life hell and he was really on my back and stalking us and he was doing really crazy things. And it just made me think, you know, perhaps I was too soft on him. So he has changed me and I'm perhaps not as patient and tolerant anymore. During the search for his first wife, Matloub did not follow the cultural trend of arranged marriages. Uh, but when they were trying to tell me, you know, marry this cousin, marry that cousin, I wasn't interested in with you because the whole cousin thing, I wasn't, see, I wasn't seeing it working. Matloub feels he has learned from the divorce. I'm ready to move on much stronger. You know, I'm a businessman and I've studied successful people. Failure was part of their life. I've met many people in my new search and generally what I'm finding is the same old thing again. It's not changed, yeah? People, you know, you're not the right caste, you're not the right money. They're not really bothered about who I am as a character, as, as a man. Just because I've been divorced or I've got a son, they don't want to know me. No, that's a no. They don't want all that baggage. For me to find a girl in this society that can accept these two things, that's the first step. But I think if people marry for the right reasons in the first place, then you know, things are more likely to work out. Although Matt Lieb was not interested in family arranging his marriage the first time, he is now open to all avenues. We've introduced him to several potential um, candidates. <laughs> Um, but the criteria of the families has been really, really difficult to meet. The marriages don't materialise. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, hey, do you pray? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I do. What about Game of Thrones? Do you watch that? <laughs> no way. I just finished season four. <laughs> Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, hey, do you pray? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I do. 
What about Game of Thrones? Do you watch that? <laughs> no way. I just finished season four. Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. I decided to search again after perhaps around three years after divorcing my ex-husband. Part of it was due to, you know, everyone on my case saying the girls are growing up, you know, the pressure as if you have to get be married, you know, as if you can live single and you can. They're saying the girls are growing up, you should get them father figure now. They might not understand or like the person after and they'd bring proposals but usually they were from people from back home and you know, I just didn't want to go there again. I just want someone with the same mentality. I've been searching on and off, so learning to trust men has been really difficult with so many weird, strange men out there. But then there was a couple who really have opened my eyes and made me realise there are good people out there, and that's what drives me. And Isra did meet someone she could trust, but the stigma of being a divorcee prevented the chances of further proceedings. You know, there was one sincere, really decent, I thought, you know, I could even trust with my children's lives. Mm. So, but then his mother, she wouldn't accept me. It's like, just as soon as she is divorced, it's like as if you, you know, it's just, that stigma attaches as if you've got some disease or something that people shouldn't marry you and she won't make a good wife and good daughter-in-law. Mm. So it's like, it's a quite, you know, that stigma. I hope like one day, you know, we can just get rid of that stigma to show people, look, you know. But it's like, why do we have to prove ourselves to people at the end of the day as well? So I guess, you know what? You know, sisters out there who are disheartened when people reject them because, you know, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, they don't want them because they're either divorced or widowed. They should think that, you know what, it's their loss because at the end of the day, they never got to see how you are as a person and it should only matter what Allah thinks of us at the end of the day and mm. who we are. And if we are happy in ourselves, you know, the right person will stand up for us at the end of the day because, mm -hmm. you know, it's if the person can't stand up for you at that time and, you know, for you then I guess you know that person wasn't right for you in the start. When I feel stressed or I need to relax I just have to visit to the pebble beach it's just amazing there the sea waves if you listen to it it's just so soothing and it just de-stresses you completely it's very secluded and just feel very peaceful and tranquility there. So this is the Pebble Beach, the wonderful Pebble Beach that I come to and many people come to relax. So it's a really good place to refresh your mind. When I feel down about things and when I have problems and things like that, I feel like it gives me positive energy just being here. It just kind of clears your mind about things and make you realise the purpose of life. It's not just about all these people that drag you down. You should just it helps me pick myself up again. I don't think I've experienced true love yet. So I guess I don't really know how it should feel. And, you know, I guess maybe that's why I'm not too bothered because I haven't felt that way in the past anyway. But I guess I'll know if the right person comes in my life, then I guess I'll know. But I'm quite pretty content in my life at the moment because Allah's always there for us. So I feel like yeah, when the right person comes into my life, I'll wait till then, yeah. This time round, Matt Lube is looking for far more than just love and religion in his marriage partner. Currently, much of his search has been online. So to increase chances of finding a life partner offline, we sent him to a local marriage event in Greater Manchester. Um, I feel marriage events are great, okay? It's a great chance to meet people. Um, in particular, you can see the ladies face to face. I've been to many before, not really had much success. But now that I've been equipped with, you know, all the, uh, you know, the, you know, the uh, ammunition, um, I'm hoping to be better prepared. Uh, I'm hoping to be more focused. 
Uh, I've had some great counselling, some great advice from the previous mentors, and I'm looking forward to you know trying these new skills today. I've been to some marriage events before. I've been to this particular event before a long time ago. Uh, I didn't really find it appropriate. You know, I was kind of uh, uh, I didn't find the right people, but um, I'm looking forward to it tonight. Uh, I'm looking forward to this event, and uh, yeah. I feel by attending a marriage event that I am making an effort and uh, I think compared to internet and compared to talking to people on the phones and, and, and the social media, I think this is probably the best way to actually meet uh, a lady or meet your spouse face to face. I've registered on this website for this event and um, I saw one or two profiles. Uh, the main thing was, you know, I was looking for somebody who prays and somebody who's practicing Islam. Um, and I read briefly, you know, they were very brief profiles. Uh, I, can't, I actually contacted many profiles and, uh, you know, I was, many of them rejected me, you know. Um, and these are the two that actually accepted my invitations to have a meeting. The event's going very well, actually. I've just had my first meeting and, you know, it's, um, she was a very pleasant lady. I think the event's very well organised compared to the ones I've been to previously. Um, and the helpers are very, very, uh, very nice. You know, they're very helpful. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I am really enjoying myself, actually, you know. The people that I've met, uh, I think one of the meetings was quite good. I think I would like to contact the girl again. She's very pleasant, you know, we wasn't really asking too many personal questions. You know, it was very, you know, kind of the conversation just flowed and we just, you know, had a good chat, really. Uh, she's a people's person, I'm a people's person, and we know how to have a good conversation and, and slowly, you know, get to know each other. I know it's not going to happen in the first meeting, but I think the most important thing is you can hold a conversation, just, you know, get, you know, like the look of someone um, and just enjoy talking to them, really. I'm about to leave now, I'm about to go home. Um, and uh, there was a few nice people I met, but I don't think I've really found you know, someone that I'm going to really, you know, pursue, you know, and, and keep talking to. Meet Adeem, president and founder of a popular Muslim marriage website. If anyone knows anything about creating a strong online marriage profile, it's him. Matloub is very active online, so we have asked Adeem to analyse his online marriage profile to see if it is helping Matloub in his quest for love. A lot about me and less about what I'm looking for, and he says I'm not fussy. Beauty, wisdom, charm, elegance, humility, kindness, etc, etc, lol. It's very vague, and I think after meeting him is that he, he is very, very specific. He's not put it on there in terms of being specific. And I think the imbalance as well in terms of he's got a lot to say about himself, but maybe not a lot to say about the type of person he's looking for put a lot of effort into his appearance, he's put a lot of effort into his, his imagery. On first appearance it looks quite nice, but I think the main weakness here is there's, it's not very Islamic at all, there's nothing in there about his faith, there's not, not, nothing in there in terms of what type of individual he's looking for, how important the faith is, the future of his partner in terms of religious wise and so on and so forth, and I think that would be, that would be really good to have, have more of that in there. The other thing that I've noticed as well, he seems to send out a very, very short message uh, to everybody, so it's the same template message that he sends to everybody um, to attract attention to his uh, profile. I think what he needs to do is be specific to their profile and uh, really show interest on their level, so not just send a, a bland message out that he's sent it, sending to everybody. After analysing Matt Loeb's profile, Adeem feels he has found him a match based on his journey so far. I think Muslims generally base their kind of search criteria on they must be pious, they must be kind of, you know, they must be religious but I don't think they actually know what the essence of that means. I think he's looking for somebody who maybe not born in the UK, because he's got a knighthood from Malaysia. He's a global entrepreneur. He's got somebody from an Indonesian background, which I think will be really, really good for him, uh, a good match. Um, it's what he said he's, he's interested in. He's looking for the qualities of his girl. He's very, very educated. And I think they'll be a really good match, personally. Do you want me to try this, right? Yeah, it might be mute now. Okay, you go. Bismillah. Mm. And that is nice. Are you sure? Um, yeah, absolutely. Really Not too hot, hot, and it's quite warm. You don't need to heat it up. Been, I'm a bit nervous. 
lot. The fact that I don't usually meet someone unless I know enough about them. Also, you have a perception about yourself. You, like you, use the word, oh, I'm very successful. Well, that in itself is also, uh, I think, a relative term. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, hey, do you pray? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I do. What about Game of Thrones? Do you watch that? <laughs> no way. I just finished season four. <laughs> Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle.